वेलकम बैक टू द डे नाइन ऑफ द हंड्रेड डेज ऑफ हेल्प विद पाइथन एल्गो ट्रेडिंग वाई आई कोल दीज हंड्रेड डेज एज हेल्प बिकॉज इन दीज हंड्रेड डेज आई मेड ए प्रोमिस टू माई सेल्फ दैट आई विल बी वेकिंग अप एट टू ए एम एवरी डे एंड विल बी रिकॉर्डिंग अ वीडियो बिफोर माई वर्क फॉर दैट आई हैव टू लीव एट सेवन एम सो फ्रॉम टू टू सेवन आई हैव टू डू ऑल दी थिंग्स राइट सो यू हेट इट और लव इट यू आर ऑलरेडी यूजिंग ओप कंसेप्ट इन योर डे टू डे प्रोग्रामिंग For example, in Python libraries like NumPy, Pandas, Scikit-Learn, all of these libraries rely heavily on the object-oriented programming. So let's get started with one of the most important, most exciting, most powerful concept of programming, which is object-oriented programming. So many people say it's very difficult to understand, but believe me, this is one of the easiest concept to learn, yet so useful, because almost all of the real life production applications are based on object oriented programming we cannot make any real life applications without the help of object oriented programming because if you try your code becomes so messy so lengthy and unreadable so here we will be understanding all the concepts of object oriented programming in detail and with the help of so many examples and trust me just focus yourself for few minutes and you will be surprised at how easy it is so now the question arises what is object oriented programming so you can simply say it organizes our program as objects so now let me show you what are the main concepts in object oriented programming so let me draw a circle here this is o object oriented programming the first concept here class the second concept here objects the third concept here is encapsulation fourth one is inheritance so i'll just write here inheritance the fifth one is abstraction and the last important concept is polymorphism so now we will be learning each concepts one by one and you will find out that how easy these concepts are now the next question is why we need object oriented programming so let me write here so you can simply say like when we have a very messy very spaghetti code it can convert that into a very neat and clean code for example so here we have multiple variables you can say and multiple functions like you have a very big application and these type of blocks like variables and functions we have multiple of them so it becomes very difficult to manage all those functions and variables so in order to resolve that issue so what we can do we can take the help of object oriented programming so you can simply say it will convert a messy or a spaghetti code into a neat and clean code or you can say organized or readable code so that's the basic understanding of why we need object oriented programming so the first of all what we will do we will understand the theory of these concepts like class objects encapsulation inheritance abstraction and polymorphism then we will move to the code so it will become so easy for us to understand this concept so let's take the first concept that is class so in simple word you can say that class is a blueprint correct which tells us that how this object will behave don't worry we will also understand shortly that what are the objects but for now just focus on class so so the class is a blueprint which tells us how the objects will behave how the objects will behave very simple and short explanation so for example we have a class and we can name it as human correct so in humans what we have so in humans we have some properties or we can say attributes and we also perform some actions some functions 
so let's say this human class have some properties or you can say some attributes and it also perform some actions some functions right so so you can write functions or you can say behavior right so now we can say that we have a human class which have some properties or attributes and also that class perform some functions right so let's say in properties or attributes what we have we have two hands right so we can say we have two hands two legs two eyes like one head so here this human class have one head two hands two legs and two eyes and we know that these attributes or properties perform some functions correct we can say the head performs some important task of the human class right which involves decision making and many more then we have hands which also perform some actions like to pick up anything and to hold anything then we have legs which helps the human class in walking and the human class also have two eyes which helps in watching or viewing anything or we can say the function of the eyes attributes is to watch or to help in the vision of the human class and here we also know that this class is just a blueprint correct now this class is applied to all the human beings whether these are males or female whether male or female everyone follow this blueprint right so philosophically we can say that god created this blueprint right this human class blueprint and now all of the human beings which are created or we can say which are born so those are the objects and all those human beings follow this human blueprint or the human class created by god hope you are getting my point what i'm what i'm trying to say so simply god created the human class and now all the human beings whether male or female follow this blueprint that is the human class when they are created or we can say when they are born and when they are dead the object is also dead and that is the real life analogy of the object oriented programming and in fact we know that all these concepts are derived from the real life only correct so now we will say that this is the data or variables correct or variables and these are the functions which are also known as the methods now you have to make sure that you do not get confused and also known as the methods so in short the variables inside the class are known as the attributes or the properties or the functions inside the class are known as the methods i hope you are getting my point so this was the class so now let's move to the objects so so what are the objects so here you can simply say that the instance of this class so let me write it so objects are the instance of the class or philosophically the god created this class human so now whenever a human being is born he or she is an object simply so let's understand this with the help of an example so let's say the god created this class so how we write a class we just write the keyword we just write the keyword class and then the name of that class so here the god created the human class and then we have to give a colon so let me enclose this in a box so you are not confused so this is the syntax of the class so what i'll do the name of the class is human and the class is a keyword okay so here when the object is created so what will happen so let's say a new human being is created kuldeep my name then what happened as soon as the object is created 
and in this scenario the humans are objects and kuldeep is one of them so when kuldeep is created or born the god already knows that he have a blueprint what he will do he'll just assign that blueprint to that human so the class name human so what he will do he will write kuldeep is equals to human and here you have to give this parenthesis right so simply you can say here this was the class name human and when the object is created the name of that object is kuldeep and it is assigned a blueprint which is human class so means all of the properties of that class and the functions of that class which is like the properties means the hand the legs the head of that class and the functions which is walking uh, thinking uh, watching all those functions will be given to this object because god don't want that every time a new object is created he will sit he will create first the hands then he will create the legs it's very difficult right so instead of that what he will do he know that he have a blueprint so he will just assign that blueprint to the new object so now it doesn't matter that how many objects are created he only needed to work only one time and now he can simply assign the the blueprint to the objects so now i think you are able to understand the power or the usefulness or amazing feature of the object oriented programming that it helps us to reuse a single code multiple times but if you try without object oriented programming similarly like if the god try to create all the human beings manually each one of them it will be absolutely hectic task for the god so he can just assign a blueprint so that was my analogy and i tried my best to make you understand this concept first visually practically in real life then if we see any code it will become very easy for us let me know in the comments whether this example was useful or not and then we can move to the next concepts which are encapsulation inheritance uh, abstraction and polymorphism now we will quickly take some examples to understand the class and objects let's say we have a human class so in that we have to first write the keyword class and then the name of the class so here in example we took the human so let's say human and then you have to give a colon here correct then here you will write your code so i'll just write pass for now and when an object is created like the humans in analogy so for example when i was created kuldeep i was given a blueprint from the god that is the human class so human and we can say that this kuldeep object is known as the instance of this human class correct and again this step is known as the instantiation of the class and we already understood in the example that this class contains some data or we can say attributes or we can say properties all are same and we can also say that this class contains data or you can say properties or you can say attributes all these are same so let's say uh, hand equals to 2 and legs 2 and head equals to 1 in general these are the variables but here we call them as the attributes or properties or you can say the data and this class also contains some functions so let's say define and we'll say vision right so i'll just pass here for now and human class also can walk so we'll we'll say define walk define walk and let me pass it like this this human class has so many functions but we will just mention uh, here few of them and humans can also think so let's say think so we have some properties which are the variables and we have some functions and the functions in class are known as the methods it's same but whenever the functions are inside class they are known as methods and the variables inside the class are known as the attributes now let's press shift and enter and this will be executed and here also when i press shift enter it will be executed so now let me create another cell so now let me write kuldeep which is the name of the object and then dot and when i type dot and you can see that we have few suggestions which is the hands the head leg think vision and walk and here you can clearly see that hands head leg these are the variables or you can say the attributes of this human class and the thing vision and walk are the functions of that class right 
hopefully you are able to understand what i'm trying to say and similarly if i want to execute this vision function here i'll just write here vision and that's it i can access all the functionality of this vision function and that's how it works let me show you another analogy here so let's say as you already know that in python everything is object right so let's say we have a list so l equals to a list which is one one two three uh, one three four we have done this multiple times right and when we write l dot here you can see these are all the functions of the list class see these the append clear copy count extend index insert pop remove reverse sort and add so these are all the functions of the list class so now you can say that someone from the python team created a class named list and we are using that class so what we are doing here we are creating an object and then we can use all those functions inside the class it's same exactly like what they did they they created a class name class and they gave it the name list or whatever the, whatever the different name and inside that they have different different functions like we have here vision walk thing so similarly they have here append clear copy and count and whatever the function we want to use we will just write that function append and we'll give a parenthesis so that is the analogy and i think now you are able to understand the whole concept clearly so here you will say that the append is the method of the list class it's not the function although they are both same but in this scenario we will say that append is the method of the list class and we also know that when we have a string let's say string and uh, kuldeep correct and when i type s dot so means string is also in class and inside that we have capitalized case fold center count but here we do not have the append function correct because the creator didn't create the append function in string because strings are immutable so we cannot add anything and that's how you can use this analogy to understand the object and methods and functions so means you can say that the functions inside the class are known as the methods and the variables inside the class are known as the attributes let me show you another example so okay so we have the string s so when we type s dot something we are displayed all the methods inside that uh, class but when we type like length len and s and let me type it again s dot lower so now we know that uh, let me do it upper because the string is already lower so okay so now i'll not answer this question you have to type that we have two things here methods or functions so len is a method or function again upper is a method or function you type in the comment just pause the video and think and then you will realize that yeah we have just learned this and you will be able to answer this and if you are still unable to answer don't worry each one of us have different kind of abilities and some of can understand any concept in one time and few of us can take two or three iterations that's easy that's nothing to worry about that because each one of has different attributes and different functions so no need to worry and each one of us are as useful as the other ones so don't compare yourself to any other just focus on yourself and you know that how many iterations you need to learn this concept or any other concepts in life so just pause the video and answer in the comment okay so let's understand this topic with the help of an example so let me create a class uh, class trading strategy so and one more thing this type of naming convention is known as the pascal case means the first letter of every word is capital that is known as the pascal case so then i will give a colon here so what will happen now there are few things which you might not understand don't worry about that i'm creating this example just to make you understand those things so just don't worry about that okay so let me define a function here so define in it yeah don't worry about this uh, we will understand this okay so in class we have two things one is attributes and another is so this is a method named in it method okay and in that i will write a word self and i know many of us have issue understanding this self keyword okay and then we will type two parameters here so one is symbol and another is amount 
correct and it's exactly the function we are creating here just the name is different because we are in class and in a class the function is known as a method so i'll add a colon here then inside that what i will do i'll write self dot symbol equal to symbol so what is happening here the symbol parameter is equal to self dot symbol then self dot amount is equal to amount okay again i'll declare another variable that is self dot position is equals to zero zero so don't worry about the self keyword now you just assume that we have a normal function with the name in it and inside that we have two parameters first is symbol and second is amount just ignore this self as of now okay now what we will do we'll define another function now you just pause and think that uh, generally in any trading strategy what things we need to consider so the first is uh, we think that what will be the buying conditions correct and the second thing we consider is that what will be the selling conditions and also we can add the status means what are the current open positions and and how much amount we are left with so that is a basic idea right so let's create another functions so one we will create for the buying right so buy and i'll close it so let me first create the skeleton so pass then i'll just copy and paste this so okay let me give some space here Mm, okay so the first function is for the buy and the second is for the sell second is for the sell and the third is for status okay and now we can check with the shift enter whether this is working or not so when we hit shift enter it says there is a tick mark means it is running fine for now so we have two parameters symbol and amount and this will be passed as an argument from the user so we know that we are getting symbol and amount from the user so here what we will do so whenever we are considering the buying condition in any strategy what we need to think we need to decide that at which price we will buy that share and how much quantity right so what i'll write i'll write price and quantity so this will also be given by the user right price and quantity and in selling condition also this will be the same that at which price we will sell our stock and how much quantity so i'll just write price and quantity right and one more thing here that we have to add self here also and here also as i told you just ignore the self don't think about it you just assume that it is not existing here for now okay and in status method also we'll just give self self has to be given to all the functions inside a class that's a thumb rule you just think that okay okay now finally we understand the self so here here we are using self everywhere here in this function also in this function also in this function also so it feels like uh, it's some kind of salutation which we have to add at every name like like sir ma'am so self function self variable everywhere we have to use the self what is self before that let's understand what is this init so here this init known as the constructor constructor and if you have studied javascript in that we used to use this right this operator if you remember correct so here we have this function which is known as the constructor and what are the properties of this constructor here so if you remember these things and practice this object oriented programming will become very easy for you okay so let's understand the properties of constructor one by one so the first property of constructor is that whenever we create any variable inside class we have to create that inside the constructor so you can say variables will be inside constructor right then the second property is that we have seen previously that whenever we we want to use the functions like these these ones we have to call them right like we have to write the name and then we have to call them but these constructors are executed automatically 
so as soon as the object of this class is created this constructor function will be executed automatically we do not need to call this so what we can conclude here now in the second property that no need to call the construction function no need to call the second property right no need to call the constructor function because it automatically gets executed okay now let's find out that what are the benefits of using this constructor and why we use this so uh, let's write benefits and why we use it right i'll just put a question mark here okay now let's check them one by one so the first thing is that so we can say that we can use the constructor when we don't want to give the control to the user generally what happens so for example when you are going on a trading exchange and you go and when you click on buy or click on sell so we can say that you have the control so the the buy or sell trade will execute it only when you click on that but there are few things which happens automatically like when you click on buy and the trade will be executed then automatically in the back end the data will get modified in the database there will be some uh, configuration files there will be some database files so all those things uh, run automatically behind the scenes right so in short you can say that you will mention those things inside the constructor for which you don't want to give the control to the user it should be automatically executed like if you go there and if you click on buy and you should expect that automatically your balance will be detected and you will get a share so let's say what happens when you have to click on the buy then again you have to click on a button that which says that are you ready to modify your database then again it asks you that i'll add this entry in this this column or this field so it will become so hectic and very frustrating for all of us so what we want that it should be executed automatically so we can say that in real life example we mentioned the configuration files inside the constructor we can also keep the database files the configuration files and those files which should be automatically executed when the programs get started so that's the simple definition so you can write here the config files inside the constructor and the db files the database files so here also we can take the same analogy of the uh, human class so what happens let's say god created a class of humans correct then what happens whenever a human is being born an object is created let's say when kuldeep object was created this class was in instantiated and i will write here humans and inside that we have a constructor function so let's say define uh, in it correct and inside that the one thing is sure and everyone know that it will happen no matter what you do whenever the human object is created the human class gets instantiated right and a constructor function is executed automatically right because this has a superpower and you know that your death countdown is already started so you can say that god don't want to give the control of birth and death to the humans so they kept this inside the constructor function so whenever an object is created automatically the constructor function gets executed and the death count of that that object is started so that's how the real life example of object oriented programming i hope it's very clear and let me know if you have any doubt in this topic and we can discuss more in the upcoming lectures okay now let's take this self what is the story behind this self so far we have understood this constructor right this one and now let's understand the story behind this self it's everywhere so what we will do we'll write here only so what i'll do i'll just remove all these things you can take screenshot if you want okay now let's understand the self this is one of the most misunderstood concept in object oriented programming but rest assured that you will be able to understand this completely after this session forever okay so before that let's understand one thing that there is a golden rule of object oriented programming let me write golden rule in golden color 
गोल्डन रूल ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग एंड व्हाट इज दैट प्लीज डू नॉट फॉरगेट दिस इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इफ यू कीप दिस इन योर माइंड वाइल सोल्विंग द ओओपी प्रॉब्लम्स यू विल बी वेरी कंफर्टेबल राइट सो द रूल इज ओनली एंड ओनली only and only pay attention to that keyword only and only object let me keep this in double quotes let me give it underline also so you will remember forever only and only object can access all the attributes and methods in a class and let's close this so this is the golden rule of oop only and only objects can access all the attributes and methods of a class means even if you are inside any class this by function cannot access the self function similarly this status function cannot access this like the symbol attribute the amount attribute or the position attribute they cannot means even if you are inside the class these attributes and functions cannot access each other then who can access only the objects and we know that how we can create the object of this class let's say i'll create an object with the name momentum is equals to trading strategy correct and here we can give the symbol let's say btc and amount let's say 0.1 the here the momentum object is created and only this momentum can access the symbol amount position means all the attributes of the class only this momentum can access and this momentum object can also access these methods which is by cell and status that is the golden rule of oop so now with this golden rule what you can infer that the self is nothing but the object itself this one this is hiding inside the class with the name self and you can keep this anything you want you can change it to others also you can change it to your name also you can have any name you want but here it became a convention so that's why we all are using self but this is the object itself it came inside and it's hiding as the self so now when we have the self means the momentum can access so here what we will do we will write momentum dot symbol momentum dot amount momentum dot position means the self is momentum only and here also we have to pass the momentum here then only we can access the by the cell and the status so you know that outside of the class how we access the inside attributes and the methods what we do we just try it like this momentum and dot so when we write dot all these are suggested let's quickly see this same in the screen without a further ado let's go so let's see here when i hit shift enter here and when i go in the next cell and there i'll write like an object name so momentum is equals to the trading okay this is a markdown <laughs> i have to create a code here code cell okay so here it will be trading strategy and this correct so when i hit shift enter it says me missing two required positional arguments symbol and amount here you can see that we have three parameters but this error says missing two required positional arguments symbol and amount it doesn't count the self okay because this is the object itself so here i'll just provide the symbol let's say btc then i'll give the amount which is 0.1 so okay i have to add this uh, okay so now when i hit shift enter it works like a charm so what i'll do in the next cell i try to access these attributes these are three attributes and we have three functions so when i just write momentum and dot so here you can see that we have some suggestions the first is amount the second is a by method 
third is position attribute fourth is cell method fifth is status method and the next is symbol attribute so here you can infer that only the object of that class can access all these attributes and the methods even the inside functions or attributes cannot access each other if they want to access they have to use the object which is the momentum and the name of the momentum inside the class is self that's it it is the end of this topic that's it you just go back and watch this video multiple times if you are getting any issue and i'm sure that you will be able to understand this concept very easy now even a small child can also understand this topic for sure okay now let's complete this example so what happens in a normal trading strategy for example if i write uh, if self dot amount the amount currently we are holding is greater than equal to the price and the quantity correct of course it's obvious right if the amount is less than we cannot buy right so then we will execute our code which is self dot position is is plus equal to is equal to the quantity correct means what will happen here let's say we have given the instruction that i want to buy a share at the at the price of 10 and the quantity is 10 so 100 right means the total amount we will spend is 100 so here when the when this condition is uh, true we will increment this position with the amount of quantity like we bought 10 shares so the position will become 10 else what it will do will print out that else we'll print out that not enough amount to proceed with the trade right so this is a simple buy condition and one more thing that when we bought any share we spent some money so what will happen here uh, self dot amount negative negative equals to the price into quantity because the amount we have spent on the buying shares it will be deducted from the total amount right so the total amount is we will initialize with the constructor again now let's move to the sell condition which is here and here we'll write if while selling the stock what we check we first check the position whether currently we are holding any position or not and if we are not holding what we will say else we'll print that what we can say currently no shares to sell correct now we write our if condition so if self dot position is greater than equal to the quantity right so for example earlier we bought 10 shares and we want to sell 20 which is not possible right you cannot make full of the exchanges so it will display this error currently no shares to sell but but if the position is greater than or equal to the quantity which you have provided what will happen it will execute the sell trade and self dot position negative equals to the quantity right so like we have 20 shares currently and we want to sell 10 shares so it will subtract those 10 shares from the current position and also one more thing will happen that now when we are selling the shares we are getting our cash or amount back so what we will write we'll write self dot amount plus equals to the price multiplied by quantity correct just the reverse of this uh, logic here and also we can print some message here while buying and selling so here we can say print um, and we can say successfully bought successfully bought the number of shares right we can write here f for the formatted string so we can say successfully bought quantity shares of the name of symbol right the self dot symbol and also we can give the amount so we can give amount at and again here a dollar sign at the price the same message we can print while we are selling the share so i'll just go here and we'll print here successfully sold quantity shares of symbol at price so that's it i guess for the buy and sell conditions now let's quickly move to the status 
So if the user wants to check that what is the current status of the shares, the positions. So what we can print here, current position of shares, right? Of shares. And also we can print the amount, right? So we can say current amount, current amount, or we can say remaining amount, right? So remaining amount can be self dot amount. Correct. Now what we can do, we can just hit shift enter. So now what I'll do, I'll create an object of this class. So I'll write, let's say, for example, momentum, momentum equals to name of class. So trading strategy. And in, inside that we have to give, see here, a symbol and amount, right? So you can give symbol, let's say ETH and amount you have to give the cash, the amount you have. So let's say I have $5,000 and when I hit shift enter, it will be executed and you know that, and this function will automatically get executed when we create an object. Now what we can do, we can access all these attributes and these functions. So let me write again, momentum dot, if I want to know the amount, right? So I'll just hit amount and when I press shift enter, I get the amount, correct? Similarly, you can also get the symbol. So let's say symbol. And when you hit shift enter, you get the symbol ETH. You can also access the position here. So position, which is zero now, right? For now. So now let's say I want to buy some ETH now. So what I will do again, write momentum dot buy. In inside that we have to provide some arguments. So the first parameter is price and second is quantity. So what I will do here, I will give here that I want to buy at the price of let's say 1200. How many ETH? I want to buy three ETH. The amount is three ETH. So when I hit shift enter, it prints out that successfully bought three shares of ETH at 1200. I have to correct the spelling successfully bought. Okay. And now let's again shift hit enter. So we can see that it has corrected successfully bought three shares of ETH at 1200. And now if I check the position, let's print it again. And so let me print, let me add another cell and here I will print the position. So you can see here that we have the position three means, means we have three shares of ETH. And now you can also check the amount. So momentum dot amount is equal to 1400 because for three shares, we have given 3600 and the remaining is 1400. So that's how it works. You can also use this cell here. So let's say I'll go and I'll write momentum. I'll write momentum dot sell. And here I will uh, give that I want to sell just two Ethereum at the price of 1300. So when I hit shift enter, it says me not enough amount to proceed with the trade and successfully sold two shares of ETH at 1300. So actually some logic error is there. So let's see what is happening here. So uh, if self position is greater than equal to quantity. Okay, actually the previous is also executing. So we have to execute this in another, another cell. And when we hit shift enter, it says me currently no shares to sell because it's already been executed. Now let's check the current position and amount. So we have the amount 4,000 and current position also let's print it. Let's print both the things print and let's print the amount also. So as we have sold two shares, so we are left with only one share and the amount is 4,000 because previously after buying the shares, we were left with the amount 1,400 and now we have sold two shares, right? Worth 1,300. So 2,600 plus 1,400 is equal to 4,000. So that's why we are seeing this. And now let's check the status. So instead of this, what we can do here, we can check the status also. So I'll just write momentum dot status. So, and here there is no parameters. So we can just hit shift enter. It will show us that the, the current position one of shares. So you can write here the symbol also in this current position of the symbol, right? So 
you can just copy and paste it here so it will display off and give some space okay when you hit shift enter run it again it will show that current position zero of ETH shares and actually we executed this function again here that's why it is showing the initial position but you get the idea right so that's how it works and I hope you have understood all the concepts very well and now you just go and attempt the multiple choice questions and the task and the mini project and trust me it will help you a lot and still if you have any issue any doubt you can let us know in the comments or you can even connect with us on uh, discord telegram or instagram so for until then take care bye bye have a nice day see you